Howdy diddly dandy, this is Captain Steve, and I'm doing a quick little overview of No Man's Sky in 2021. And as you can see here, I've got quite a lot of gaming hours clocked up inside of No Man's Sky. Um, <laughs> a little bit too many, but I love No Man's Sky. So this is the actual title screen. This is actually the galactic map. So this is from in-game. You can go to all of those planets. Now, if it wasn't on PS5, you would actually see sort of names of these popping up. But because I'm on PS5, it loads in super quick. And... It's beautiful. You can see down there in the right hand corner that it says that an expedition has just finished, which is like a little update on how I'm getting on. There's also emojis in game too, so there you go, I'm interacting with you guys, giving you a double thumbs up and that. And camera mode, camera mode is freaking awesome. So you can change the daytime, you can change the time of day, you can change the cloud layer, the fog density, you've got a whole load of different sort of special effects and things that you can tweak with inside camera mode. And the beauty with camera mode is after you've taken your picture, you can instantly share it onto Twitter or you can put it onto a USB and put it onto other platforms if you want out there in the universe which is it's just freaking great in the way that you can share this sort of stuff so not only is the game sort of you know everything that you get inside the box and you can play solo or you can play with friends but there's also a massive great big community out there you can share your pictures online or video clips and things like that and you usually get a lot of feedback and it's awesome to be able to share your discoveries in this infinite universe with a whole vibrant and active community the community is a massive aspect to this game so yeah after you finish doing all the quests and things there's so much you can share with one another your discoveries your ships your finds your, your multi-tools planets bases there is so much sharing in this community and there's so much creativity to be had but the beauty of this game is the exploration first and foremost i mean the planets are far more evolved than what they used to be from release i mean a lot of the planets that i'm visiting right now i'm going to uncharted systems of space which i find is where you find some of the really really strange planets. Now to get there you're going to need some sort of a, a idiom drive or a cadmium drive or, or a drive that can jump you to these uncharted areas of space. So you're not going to see these gnarly planets right from the off. It's not until you're a seasoned freaking explorer that you're going to come across these. Or you can actually use portal codes. If you manage to get all the portal glyphs you can open up a portal and jump to any of these worlds that I'm seeing. You may have noticed when I was in photo mode there was like a little code at the bottom portal glyphs you can use those to go anywhere you like and yet the oceans you can explore the oceans you can explore caves you can explore everywhere exploration first and foremost is what makes this game freaking awesome i mean a lot of people say to me captain steve is it a fun game it depends what your definition of fun is. You know, not everybody likes bouncy castles. <laughs> Me included. You know, I always end up spreading my ankle or nearly suffocating on the dang things. Or I get super out of breath jumping up and down. So I don't like bouncy castles. But other people will say, yes, bouncy castles are fun. You know, it's, it's in their freaking title. But what I find fun is I find fun putting together all these technology to make the stats go higher on my ship or to find that S class ship or to even get a B class or a C class ship and upgrade it to A and then to S class and uh, building things up slowly. If you like games that are a bit of a grind but don't rely on loot caches this is definitely a game for you. There's no sort of running around and digging up what you can actually dig up chests. I mean in the chests here though you're going to find rare items that you can sell for quite a lot of units you're not going to find rare modules to put inside of your person or anything like that there's no sort of raids or or huge treasure hunts which there might be one day this game is always evolving and hello games the developer of this game listens to their community and listens to the ideas so me saying this now oh there's not loot caches at the moment that give you modules there might be one day. They've just introduced X-Class modules the other month. And you, you install an X-Class module and it's like a contraband module. It might have better perks than an S-Class module or it might not. But they're kind of illegal. They kind of, You only get them from certain vendors. It's, it's crazy. And look at this planet. So when I first landed on it, there was a storm. And you can see here all the clouds sort of departing. And you can see that there's a big ringed planet there. I'm on an alien world. It, it's just beautiful. And, you know, you can just pop into camera mode. You can take a picture of that. Or you could even do a little video section of those clouds dissipating and share that out there on places like Reddit or, and things like that. It is, it is so amazing. There is so much to this game apart from just playing. And, oh, 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 oh I've got myself a creature. Oh, it bit me. It freaking bit me. Right, you, you roused about. I'm going to have you. So here we go. I'm going to use the Animus Beam. Animus Beam actually sucks the souls out of whatever you destroy. <laughs> 
it's a bit overkill. Bit overkill. Now the body is rolled down the hill somewhere. Ah, it's I can't see where it's rolled off to. But yeah, you can then go over and melee attack it and punch it across the planet if there's if there's low gravity, which is always fun. But yeah, when I say low gravity, there are some planets that don't have gravity and you can jump so much further. There's superheated planets where you rocket pack. Because it's a superheated planet, you can fly for, for longer. But yeah, it it is awesome. However, your, your exosuit does sort of negate a lot of gravitational problems. There are gravitational storms where not so much. There's also tornadoes that would take you up into the sky and there's lightning storms the storm mechanics are new they came in not so long ago and they are awesome now i'm loving the fact that whenever you find a creature on a planet there's all this procedural text but you can actually rename your creatures so there's one i'm going to call him birdie man bird bird heck yes and this little bitey chap is going to be bitey muck bitey heck yes and you can see all the procedural text over the side there and it mentions a planet name planet new avapol well i don't really want to have planet avapol but here i'm renaming this creature bitey muck bite bitey nice one bitey muck bitey right so he's all named but say if i I didn't like the actual name of the planet, like I was mentioning there, the new Apple. I can just go and I can I can even rename the planet, and then you can rename the systems. You can rename pretty much anything you wish. I mean, there is a profanity blocker, and so you can't get away with naming it something crazy like rude or anything like that. It will get blocked. But there we go. I'm going to rename this one. So it's, this is the one with all the wavy plants that look like they're underwater. I'm going to call this one Wavy Davy. Heck yes. Yeah. So let's get that locked in and uploaded. Wavy Davy Planet. And uh, yeah, we've got Biting and Bitey on there. And you can see here, it's now updated the procedural text to mention the planet name that I just put in there. Freaking excellent. So any other players that come and visit this player, this planet, can come and see Bitey McBitey. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, double thumbs up. Loving the emojis and loving the interactive elements and loving the fact that everything you do is seeable by other players. They can see your exosuit, they can see your multi-tool, they can see your planets, they can see what you've named, they can see your bases. It's and and you know, it's just not limited to in the game. Because you can put all this stuff on Reddit, you can put it on Twitter, and there's such an active community that people are coming back and saying, Where did you find that? That's so cool. Have you got the portal portal coordinates? You drop them the portal coordinates coordinates they go over there they can even put down little message orbs so when you go back there you get a nice little message pop up saying hello i visited it, it's great it's so cool the community is awesome the best community out there i mean reddit is usually you know it's full of trolls reddit and no man's sky community is full of lovely people i mean you get the odd one but yeah you know every community has its odd spanner doesn't it but yeah it, it's awesome this is the galactic map so right now i'm looking for another uncharted area of space and there's there's a planet there data unavailable well i'm going to go there and i'm going to start scanning and searching stuff and see what we can find exploration is the main reason that you might pick up no man's sky and i'm telling you no man's sky has helped me through lockdown it really has i mean we had a terrible 2020 and it looks like we're going to have a terrible 2021 although you know things are picking up now with this whole vaccine malarkey and things so fingers crossed we'll be out and and about before too long but for now you know i can't explore the outside world for fear of freaking viruses but here you can explore to your heart's content and no one's running around with freaking masks or, or going social distancing keep away keep away here you can be as social as you like, chuck on a headset and you can talk to whoever you want. It's freaking excellent. So this has helped me become social. I've picked up so many friends. In, in No Man's Sky I've picked up people that I would actually say are real friends. Now they do have No Man's Sky meetups in real life as well, usually over in the UK in Guildford where this game was made at Hello Games. So yeah, usually the pub around the corner. And it's, it's, it's awesome. I went two years ago and I met some awesome people. Friends for life. Friends for freaking life. Because it's great. I mean, you've got to admit, this is the sort of game that you dreamt of. When you picked up a gaming console, all those, me, it was an Amiga, and I played Elite, Elite on the old Amiga. And when I was playing it, the sort of thing that I was imagining was this, you know? And now this is an actual thing. It's, a, ah, it's an amazing game. 
It's an amazing game if you, if you want to be a space explorer and you love sci-fi and you love nods to all those old sci-fi elements. Some of the ships you look at and you think, oh, that's very Battlestar. Oh, that's very Star Wars. I just bounced off a freaking cliff here. So you never know what you're going to find when you're flying down to these planets, which is awesome. I mean, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can scan the planet and you can think, well, that's a frost crystal planet. I've landed on a lot of frost crystal planets and you know that it's going to be covered in snow. You know, it's a frost world. So... It's like if you land on a one that's a volcanic world, it's going to have volcanoes, you know? So there's always going to be elements of things that you're going to know, you, you're going to see. It's like this one said that it had ammonia. Now, ammonia normal, normally comes from fungal type plants, so I knew this planet would have mushrooms, but I didn't know that it would have large stalks like that. And I didn't know there would be large rings on this planet that you can fly through. So, although there are patterns that you may sort of know before you even land on a planet, it's a sense oh, that might have mushroomy type planets, or it might be fungally type planet. And yet you fly down, but you don't know what colour the grass is going to be. You don't know what sort of plant structures it will have. You know it might be fungal, but obviously you don't know if it's big stalks or little shrooms or whatever, or little mushroom ha houses and things. It, the game is massive. And the procedural generation is getting better and better and better. When this game first released, you didn't have this sort of sort of stuff going on. I mean, there was no rainbows. There was no lightning storms. The rings would only appear on sort of trophy-type planets, but now they can appear anywhere. The game is getting better and better when it comes to proc gen, and the terrain is getting more and more alien with each release. And I'm loving where they're going with this. Now, they said that Origins was the first step, like a foundational step into a new direction for the way that they wish the game to progress. And I'm loving it. It feels so much more alien. The exploration has vastly improved from where it was this time last year. So if you've only played up to, say, I don't know, September of last year, the game has gone through leaps and bounds. When Origins and Generations dropped, it's like a completely new game. I would strongly suggest if you liked it before, you're going to love it now. So yeah, definitely jump back on in 2021. And we had so many updates in 2020. It was almost every two to three months, new update. And it wasn't just a, a small thing. You know, we got mechs. You can now walk around on a planet in giant robot mechs, if you like. I didn't put it in this video. Shite. But, yeah, I mean, just put in mech trailer, No Man's Sky. And you'll see what the mechs are all about. We've got living ships. We've got all this new funky terrain generation. We've got new sort of camera mode filters and things. It's The game is... There's bite beats in there. You can actually make your own little tunes to put in your bases and things. There's so many new cosmetics that have been added. There's derelict freighters. Again, I didn't put it in the video. But there's derelict freighters you can now traverse. And you can zap bad guys inside. There. I say bad guys. They're little creatures that run up the freaking walls like spider creatures. Ah! And there's like jelly fish in there. And um, little sentinel chaps in some of them. Yeah, derelict freighters, you're going to get a load of sort of tainted metal in there, new resources and things, new base parts, you're going to get captain's log, new lore, you can find out what happened to the crew of the derelict freighters, it, it's so cool. Now, if you don't want the solo experience and you want to play with friends and, and you haven't seen No Man's Sky since release, I mean, on release, they said that you could you could find other players, but they were just light orbs. Those light orbs have been replaced back in Next and Beyond. But if you've only played this on launch and then put it down and never come back to it, you can now see players. Players are inside of what's called the Nexus or the Space Anomaly. The Space Anomaly is the outer shell, if you like, and the actual Nexus is where you get all your missions from, but people just call it the Nexus. There's so many references to spatial anomalies now in No Man's Sky that it's hard for people to know what you're on about, so a lot of people just call it the Nexus. But in here, you can actually view other players' ships, and there's some starter ships there, and that ship, this is also known as like the Alpha Vector. So if you bought the collector's edition of No Man's Sky, some people got the model of the ship, and it looked exactly like that ship. Someone's actually hunted it down in-game and found it. And if you want to get that ship, you can get the portal code. You can jump over and get one yourself. So it's awesome. Hunting ships becomes a big aspect of this game because you get to see them inside of the Nexus. And when you scan the ship, it tells you the player that owns the ship, which is it's just great. It's fantastic. There was a couple of exotic ships there. You know that one with the wings over the back, the weird shaped wings? Yeah. Nice, nice. That's quite a rare ship. And you can actually check out other players and you can see here everybody's got their own sort of customised look about them. So you can change out your helmets, you can change your gloves, your, your boots, you can change the colour of all of those. Even the backpack that I've got on is a cosmetic. Now if you do want to pick up cosmetics, you need to run Quicksilver missions, which is like an in-game sort of currency. And before you ask, no, you can't buy this currency with 
with real currency, like, you know, EA and all that sort of stuff, and the way that bigger AA, AAA companies are going with buying loot caches and randomization. No, in here, you run missions. You earn Quicksilver by running missions, by doing stuff in-game, earn it, go see this little chap that looks like Johnny Five or, you know, from Short Circuit, and you trade in that Quicksilver for items. And a lot of these are like cosmetics for either your base or your character or your ship or um, uh, new titles to rock about with or banners that people might be able to see when you're hooking up with them through multiplayer. It's all cosmetic stuff. None of this is going to give you an edge over another player. I mean, there really, there really isn't a PvP element in here. I mean, you can do that. You can turn on damage. You could build yourself a PvP arena, and you can have a little set to with somebody. I mean, if you type in No Man's Sky PvP, and even if you put in Captain Steve versus someone like Snow Obsidian, you're going to see me get decimated by Snow Obsidian because he's a freaking ninja. The guy kicked my butt. But here we go. And there's lots of NPCs up inside of this area too. So even if you don't want to play in the multiplayer, you can still come up here to engage with some of the NPCs. You can see that I've got some nanites. But there's another vendor over there. You can do cooking and you can hand in the goods to him. And he's a bit like Gordon Ramsay. He will critique your food. <laughs> Good old Kronos. And I love the fact that they're named after Greek mythological characters. But this is the appearance modifier. So if you don't want to be rocking around with like a space helmet on, you can make yourself a very alien-esque looking type character. So I've set up three presets here, but you can do all sorts. I mean, this one looks like a disturbed version of Hello Kitty, and this one looks like a shark dude. Yeah, he's really cool. But yeah, I, I like my character as he looks right now, so I'm just going to keep the changes there. But you can you can play about in the customization area for ages, and because you've got the Quicksilver, you can rock with a very customised look by some of those cosmetics that you can get to enhance your character through playing the game and running missions. Now, I would say the missions, there is... There are, is quite a lot of different missions but after you've run them a few times they do feel a little bit repetitive I'm not gonna lie that some of them but because they change out quite regularly and you play maybe five in one day they're, hopefully they're gonna be five different missions and then you come back another day and you pick up another five and they're procedural to some extent which is quite cool um, so yeah because you're gonna be landing on a different planet you might be hunting alien flora on one planet and, but then you go to a different planet when you do Alien Flora again. So it makes it slightly more interesting, especially into the, if you're into the discovery aspect and you want to scan all the creatures on those planets and catalogue the planet. You can tie that into doing the mission at the same time. There's no time limit on the mission, apart from you've got to do it in one sitting. So you can't just save halfway through a mission and come back and complete it the next day. You've got to finish the mission if you start the mission. So yeah, but yeah, I'm loving doing all the S-classing of stuff, upgrading things, putting in technology. And as you can see here, I've got S-class pretty much everything and that's another thing to mention you could see there I've got a giant capital ship it was all fuzzy because it's not in this system at the moment so I'm going to go outside of the Nexus and we're going to call in my capital ship and I'm going to show you the bonuses of having a capital ship so if you like something like Battlestar Galactica you know the series you're going to love having your own capital ship because it almost puts you in charge of having your own fleet of ships so you've got things called frigates which accompany your freighter and the frigates you can send out on missions to bring you back stuff I will show you the actual um sort of interaction with, with my uh, frigate fleet and the, the commander of the frigate fleet, well, the, the frigate itself and things. But yeah, you, sometimes they come back with some awesome rare items. But as they're doing all these missions, they actually level up as well. So you can actually rank up your whole frigate fleet from like C-class all the way up to S-class. And I really enjoy doing that with my actual frigate fleet. It's a shame though, you can't actually accompany the frigate fleet. So if you send out a few frigates on a mission, you can't sort of, well, you can jump to the same system and you can see the frigates there, but you don't actually see them going down to the planets and doing all the things that come back in the actual mission log, which it would be cool to be able to do that and accompany them on a mission. And whatever you do on the mission would have a sway on it. Who's to say that's not going to happen in the future though? Like I say, Hello Games are always putting in new updates. We had loads of updates last year, like I said, like one every two months to three months. I think we had about four or five updates, maybe maybe even been six updates last year alone. It, it was freaking crazy. 
And yeah, so I've got a load of ships here. You can see there that I've got like six ships. I've got an exotic ship there and a couple of fighters because I really like the barrel nose fighters with the droid in the wing. But I did have haulers at one stage. I've got a shuttle in there too. But this is my actual capital ship. Now the capital ship is like a mobile base. You can build these out however you want. So I put that on the wall. That's a galactic trade terminal. And here I can trade in things. And you can see there, some of them have got green numbers on. So if they've got green numbers on, that means that they're going to sell more for in this system. So really you want to sell all the stuff that's got a green there. And anything that might be red, you don't sell. Anything that's white is just baseline. They're not going to give you any more for it in that system. So there is an economy and a bit of a trade system going on there. It's not as advanced as something like EVE Online, but there is still trade in an economy system. You can't really trade with other players and boost economy and crash economy so much as in EVE. There is a little bit of that, but it's not as evolved. But again, like I said, that, that could change. Here you go. I'm debriefing one of my... Um, managers or captains of a frigate at the moment and you can see here the mission log entries and each of these entries count as an encounter and those encounters go towards the progress and the XP that that frigate's going to get to level up to its next rank so at the moment that freighter that, that frigate that I just sent out was only a B class here you go it make more sense if I go around to the console so if I interact with my fleet management console you can see here I've named all my frigates because you can name them as well after all my favorite 80s programs when I was a kid so this one is called transformers you can see there it's a B class and it's only a certain percentage and I've got to have so many more interactions before it goes up to an A class so I'm doing that at the moment it's my final frigate to upgrade and because it's a combat frigate I want to pick up combat related frigate missions so here I go into here there's a combat related mission there you can see that it's going to take five hours at the top I need to pick my frigate and so let's go through the pages, grab transformers, chuck it in there. You can see that the mission is difficulty rated in one star. My, my frigate at the moment is three star, so it should be able to do this mission with no support. I'm sending it out on a mission, lickety spit, and it's going to come back with loads of different stuff, a bit of XP, a bit of a mission log. And those mission log entries, sometimes they're quite fun to read. I, I, I read one the other day where it went down to a diplo farm. And like I said, you can build your own base and you can have a farm on your actual freighter and you can call your freighter into any system so you can bring all this with you now you can pick bits up like here you go I'm just harvesting a couple of my plants and you can go over to nutrient processors and those plants you can convert them and you can take change them into food products so you know that guy that I mentioned on the Nexus the, the Gordon Ramsay the cookery guy you can actually cook recipes and you can make things to take over to him and he will critique your food so it's even got cooking in the game now. I mean, this wasn't a thing at launch at all. I mean, you couldn't even build a base at launch. It wasn't until the Foundations update that you could build bases. And frigates and freighters, they came a lot later as well. So if you haven't played the game since launch, the game is vastly improved. Vastly. There's so much in this now to keep you occupied. You can do pretty much what you want. If you want to cook for a whole day and just give things to Gordon Ramsay, the Kronos on the freaking Nexus, you can there's so much you can do it's a mental so if you're looking for just a break from reality right now i would strongly suggest jumping onto no man's sky and this here is called a large refiner so as well as making food products you can refine metals into other metals and base products for crafting of your bases and building up bases and talking of bases you can use base terminuses to actually jump and fast travel to any bases that you've built or even space stations that you've visited in in a heartbeat you know, and a lot of these bases, you can see here, I've built a scorpion, I've built like a giant sort of dragonfly base. I like trying to build bases that are functional, yet look quite quirky. So yeah, there's that creative element. You can do base offs, so you can sort of compare bases to one another and things like that. Open it up to a community on a live feed or something and ask them which base they like the most. But here, I'm just sort of interacting with my cookers here. So I've built... So a lot of things you've got to refine and then refine again to get the end product. So here you go. I've just turned the gamma root into some sort of beans. And now I'm going to put in those sort of other things that I just made in the other refiner. And it's going to make some fibrous stew. Now that fibrous stew, because you've done it through one refining process to another refining process, I could take that refining, sh that uh, fibrous stew and probably turn it into some sort of donut filling or something and build a donut or a cake or something or a pie or some sort of weird dessert. And I could keep refining and keep refining. It'd be worth more. And the critique, Kronos, might give me more nanites for it. So depending on how much work you put into your refining, gives you better results and better yield at the end of your refining. So some people just like doing that. There's so much in this game. 
I like I like leveling up things and getting the best I can out of all my tech and um, and scrapping ships and things because that's another thing you can do you can pick up like a, a junker ship you can fix the ship get it off the planet take it to a scrapping unit scrap it get all the scrap get a load of modules and upgrade stuff that way so you don't have to always be spending money you can just go on a scavenger hunt you can see here I'm on a volcanic world with an actual volcano that's about to erupt it's mental it's beautiful and there's ships flying in all the time. So there you go. Look, there's a hauler there. Look at that. That's massive. It's far bigger than any of the ships that I currently have. And it's an A-class as well. Well, let's go and have a better look at that. Say if I wanted that ship and I wanted... I could trade my ship for it with this agent right here. I can talk to this guy here. I can ask him how much he wants for his ship. Now, you can only have six ships currently on a freighter um, and only six ships in your inventory space. But when this game first launched, you could only have one ship. You couldn't even rename your ship. Now you can rename your ship, you can own up to six different ships, and you can upgrade your ships, you can put technology in them. The game has evolved massively, like I keep saying. Seriously, check it out. If you haven't checked it out since launch, it's completely different. Even if you had it when it was next or beyond, it's still completely different because there's so many new planets and biome types and creatures and fauna. And you can see here I've built a base that looks like a scorpion. And you know, people can just chuck in the portal code, they can come and visit, they can put down message orbs, like I said before, I can take pictures and put it on Reddit. In fact, one of my scorpion bases that I built before got featured inside of the Nexus. That's another thing. Inside of the Nexus, there's a big portal in there, a big portal terminus that comes up with featured bases. And Hello Games actually picks free bases and features them so the whole community can just jump straight to that base. It's, it's amazing. It really is amazing. There's so much to this. And Hello Games cares so much about their actual community. And they're always putting out new updates or even even community spotlights. So they put out um, like a patch list or something on the Hello Games website. And on there would also be like a community spotlight where they've they're featured people's artworks or screenshots or even bases or, or anything from the community. There's so much that can be shared, like I've been saying the whole time. Hello Games picks out bits from the community and shares it. I have not known another games developer that shows their community as much love as the community of No Man's Sky. And No Man's Sky's community shows Hello Games loving kind. I mean, there's a Zendesk where you can report bugs, you can report sort of things that need to be fixed, or you can even send in ideas. I send them ideas videos all the time. They probably know my email address now and probably got a special folder for me called the Recycle Bin. I don't know, but <laughs> it's weird though, because a lot of my ideas videos that I've put out there, eventually the things in my ideas videos, some of them have made it into the game. I don't know whether it's down to me or responsible or what I like to hope it is. I'm hoping that they listen, but you know, the community, I'd imagine are bombarding them with similar sort of ideas, and Hello Games are working the ideas in, if they can, and if it fits into the universe, and I'm seeing new things all the time, it's awesome, I love the day and night cycle, I'm loving all the storms, I'm liking the fact that you can have different cloud cover at different times of day, or during a storm you can have more clouds and things. The game is epically beautiful. Now I find myself just taking pictures and looking at ships as they fly in. Look, there's an exotic ship that's just flown in right that right now, which is quite cool. So I'm just going to pop into camera mode, save myself from flying all the way over there, and I go there in camera mode. It's like having your own little personal drone. It's freaking awesome. In fact, I really wish that it would... You know, a little drone pops out of your shoulder and flies off or something, like the little exodroid. It'd be cool if you, when you're in camera mode that you control the little exodroid. It's just a thing. But yeah, how cool is that? So there, a little exotic ship just landed right there and then. Now, you may have seen that I got bit earlier by Bitey McBitey. You know, you can come to a completely different planet. This is a, this is a different planet that I was on. It was planet Wavy Davy, the Bitey McBitey. This planet looks very Earth-like, and there's no wavy plants, obviously. But the actual creature that bit me was like a shark-type cat. And you're going to see here, there's another sort of shark-type cat that frequents this world. So sometimes you are going to see patterns. I'm not going to say that you won't. If you've played the game for over 600 hours like I have, I do see certain patterns. It's like the rocks there with the crystals in. I have seen that rock with crystals in on other planets. But 
it might be a rock that's got red crystals in rather than yellow and things like that. There's subtle differences. There's always a subtle difference. Take that, you! Mighty Moe bites his cousin. Look at him roll down the hill. Yeah, like a slinky. Everyone loves a slinky. Go, slinky, go! Right. <laughs> I do love Ace Ventura. If you do watch my channel long enough, you're going to see a fair few Ace Ventura um, quotes, to be fair. Because <laughs> who doesn't love Ace Ventura? Now, you can see here, I, I have, I've got a multi-tool that isn't quite equipped at the moment with all the modules but you can have up to three multi-tools now so i've just swapped to one with a grenade launcher take that bite him and bite his cousin kapow he's gone now or bite him and bite he looked a little bit shark like had fin on his back these ones don't they've got these sort of weird resident evil heads these kittens but yeah you do find that the predatory creatures more often than not look like cats and i just harvested a tree there so if you do like grinding and gra grabbing resources that's all still here. I mean, you can still terrain manipulate the terrain and dig massive great big holes as well. If you like gathering resources, oh, there's loads to be had. And they've added ancient bones and salvageable tech now as well, so you can dig up these skeleton fossils that can be worth billions of units and things. Well, not billions, but millions. A lot, basically. Or, or even salvageable tech. You might find this big module buried under the ground, and you dig it up, and wow, it's, it's worth a load of money. Or you can visit a ruin, open a chest, and find some sort of ancient relic. Okay, if the screen ever does this, this means that there's a sandworm inbound, a giant freaking fauna creature i'm being bitten again by freaking resident evil head dog face right okay there we go look at that look at that giant sandworm so this is one of the the megafaunas that they've added in now when i say one of the megafaunas it's the only real megafauna apart from something you might find in face space like giant jellyfish creatures and things because you come across those spatial anomalies have been added as well it's freaking ace so you might be in space and just come across a giant jellyfish flying around but yeah I'm hoping that they add more giant fauna in future because it's awesome when you see one. You can see here, I mean, freaking mind-blowing stuff. I'm standing right next to some damaged machinery, you know? There's so much to find on planet surfaces and there's so much that I haven't told you about my No Man's Sky. I've just told you my favourite elements and why I think you guys out there in viewer world should come and give No Man's Sky another try in 2021. Heck yes, I'm talking to you. Pick it up and give it a go. You'll be glad you did. Anyway, that's my little roundup. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. I want to say a massive great big thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And thank you to my backers over on Patreon and on YouTube membership. If you do want to support this channel, you could just not skip my adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. Heck yes, there's also merch on this screen now. Awesome!